Welcome back. Now, before we take a look at the day's business news, let's first take a look at the stock indices across the GCC. And in our top business story, the Dubai Electricity and Water Authority has launched a new 57.5 million dirham water pipeline project on the Palm Jumeirah in order to meet growing demand. The new project includes the planning and laying of water transmission pipes, covering a total of three kilometres. According to His Excellency Saeed Mohammed Al Taya, the MD and CEO of Diwa, the main objective of the project is to enhance production and operational capacity, support water transmission networks, and increase water flow to meet an increasing demand for water for current and future projects in the Crescent area of the Palm. He also revealed that the project will be carried out in accordance with a pre-planned programme and is expected to be completed within 18 months. Singapore's Semcorp Industries has announced that it has started work on its 200 million US dollar expansion project for the Fajera One independent water and power plant in the UAE. Semcorp and its project partners, the Abu Dhabi Water and Electricity Authority and Abu Dhabi based global energy company Taka, celebrated the launch. And when complete, the expansion will increase the plant's seawater desalination capacity by 30 million imperial gallons per day and will be produced by using reverse osmosis technology, making it the largest reverse osmosis desalination facility in the Middle East. The plant currently has a capacity of 100 million gallons per day and 893 megawatts of power generation. The expansion is expected to be completed in the first half of 2015 and will help meet the expected increase in water demand in Abu Dhabi and the Northern Emirates over the coming years. With strengths in logistics, tourism and hospitality, the UAE recorded 9.6 billion US dollars in foreign investment inflows last year up 20% from 2011, that's according to a new report. According to a local daily, the UA moved up one place to reach 14th position in the latest AT Kearney Global Foreign Direct Investment Confidence Index, despite a general drop in FDI in the region by 10% to 96 billion US dollars. The report stated the UA's well-developed infrastructure, strategic location and tax-free base were the reasons for increased international investment. And experts were quoted as saying that with strength in logistics, tourism and hospitality, the UA remains a magnet for regional investments in the Middle East and that FDI could increase in coming years as the UA eases foreign ownership laws. Weakness continued in gold last week as the precious metal touched its lowest level in three years at 1,180 US dollars a troy ounce. The precious metal has shared more than 11% in the past two weeks as the US dollar has rallied and inflation expectations are on the wane. After breaching through 1,200 levels last week, the yellow metal has consolidated in the channel between 1,200 and 1,250. Well, we earlier spoke to Gaurav Kashap, the head of the DGCX desk at Alpari Middle East, to get his views on the performance of the precious metal in the week ahead. Following one of its worst one-week performances in the past three years, we've seen gold uh, open Monday's trading session on, on, on the higher side. Now, uh, after it hit a low of about 11.80 a troy ounce in last week's trading session, the upward moves in Monday's uh, trading session are more of a 
as a result of the unwinding of some short positions and profit taking on some of the short positions that have been built up over the past two to three weeks. Uh, at present, none of the data has been changing. Uh, the, the overall trend in gold does remain to be on the bearish side and any, any type of moves upwards in excess of 1300 uh, may present an ideal uh, shorting opportunity in the precious metal. Once again, the gold trade is tied very much into inflation and uh, as and when the inflation data continues to either trend in line with expectations or move slightly lower, this will continue to weigh down uh, on gold prices. Overall, the, the most recent moves in, uh, in the precious metals uh, do signify that we could expect to see a move towards 10, 1070 to 1100 uh, troy ounce in the upcoming uh, quarter. Now looking at the economic calendar at the week ahead, uh, we have several key interest rate decisions from the Reserve Bank of Australia, the European Central Bank, as well as the Bank of England. Now all of these are expected to remain unchanged, which means the attention will once again turn to Friday's US non-farm payrolls number. Now the expectations are for about 175,000 new jobs, with the overall unemployment rate coming in at 7.5%. Now if we look at uh, the previous month's uh, unemployment claims, the figures haven't been uh, outstanding and they we do not expect to see a larger uh, increase in the non-farm payroll, so we're expecting to see that figure to come in between 160 and 175. But overall, once again, it's going to be a shortened trading week because of the U.S. Independence Day holiday, and we do expect the volatility to continue. With several Fed speakers speaking on Tuesday, uh, we do expect to see choppy trading conditions, and we expect the U.S. dollar to once again remain on the front foot in the week ahead.